Hi folks, in this video I'm going to explain how the reasoning works in some of the knights and knaves problems to make them a little more straightforward. The type of reasoning that's sometimes employed in these is called the disjunctive syllogism. It's a type of common reasoning from a disjunction. Both of these examples right here uh, have the same idea behind them. Like let's say you know some premise P or Q, and you also know P can't be true. Well if one of those is true and it's not P, then it's got to be Q. So this is a clearly valid form of reasoning once you think about it. Instead of just saying P is false, uh, we could even say more strongly P is impossible, or there's a contradiction if P is the case. Because if P is impossible, that does mean not P uh, is necessarily true. So uh, putting it in terms of impossibility uh, is no less valid than putting it in terms of negation. If I know P or Q is true and it can't be P, then it's got to be Q. Now, let's think about this in terms of a knights and knaves problem. We know a disjunction in all of these cases. Like we know, we're talking about A and B here. We know A is either a knight or a knave. Sometimes we also have some other further information, like exactly one of them is a knight. So let's consider, could A be a knight or could A be a knave? Are both possible? Well, let's first imagine A is a knight. Then whatever A says is true, so they have to both be knights. But since we know only one of them is a knight, uh, it can't possibly be the case that they're both knights, so that's a contradiction. So just like the disjunctive syllogism, we can reason in this way. A is a knight or a knave, but it's impossible that A is the knight, so A has to be the knave. Uh, we just get to eliminate one of those possibilities. Of course, that also tells us uh, what B is. Uh, we know B is a knight in this case because one of them has to be. All right, so there's a, an example I've walked you through. Now I want you to try one. So read through this problem, uh, take some notes, pause your video, and try to work this out yourself. So I want to uh, ask you a couple of questions. Firstly, you have to tell me who is the random person. Exactly one of them is a random. Which one is it, A, B, C, or can you not tell? And also tell me uh, what are all of A, B, and C? Is A a knight or a knave or a random? Is B a knight or a knave or a random, etc. Okay, pause your videos. Uh, remember, the disjunction here is a three-way disjunction. Uh, we're not just talking about knights or knaves anymore. We're talking about knights, knaves, and randoms. Each person is one of those three things. Okay, last chance to pause your videos. I'm going to talk about the solution now. Let's see. <clears throat> a says, I'm a knight. Now, a knight could say that. A knave could say that, too, because then the knave would be lying. A random could even say that. So this is not a super helpful bit of information. Sometimes you start with A, maybe, but that doesn't help you figure out anything. You just have to go on to B. So now let's consider B. B says, I'm a knave. Now, could a knight say that? No, because if a knight said it, it would be true, and they would be a knave, but that's a contradiction of them being a knight. Could a, so a knight could not say this. Could a knave say this? Well, no, they couldn't, because if a knave said it, the knave has to be lying, but this would be true if a knave said it, and they, so they wouldn't be lying. So that's a contradiction, too. Um, so we can infer that B can't possibly be a knight or a knave. And just like the disjunctive syllogism before, if the knight is impossible, the knave is impossible, then B has to be a random. Ah, so we do have our solution. The answer to the first question was the random is B. Uh, we have enough information. Uh, now, why don't you think forward now, exactly one of them is a random, so now you know more information. Now either A is a knight or a knave, and C is a knight or a knave. So see if you can figure out what the rest of them are, too, if you didn't get it beforehand. Okay. Unfortunately, A does not give us much information because a knight or a knave would both say this. So there's actually insufficient information to tell what A is. But C is a different story. What if C is a knight? Then C would have to be speaking truly and saying I'm a random, but that's not possible um, because knights are not randoms and randoms are not knights. So that so C cannot possibly be a knight. Could C be a knave? Um, yes, because if C is a knave, I'm a random is false. Um, so we've actually figured out another person. We know that uh, B is a random and C is a knave. Remember, there's only one random, so that's why C can't possibly be a random, and we know C can't be a knight, so they've got to be a knave. And, of course, for A, there's just insufficient information. Okay, so there's a little more uh, help on how to think about knights and knaves problems and to reason your way through them. Thanks.